Hello everyone, welcome back to For Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. I've been trying to test a vehicle to land 10 Kerbals on EVE and bring them back, but so far there have been problems. Uh, this one in particular uh, seems to flip out in the atmosphere below a certain level and doesn't really get a good capture going. We'd have to pass through too many times and eventually I think we would run out of ablator, which is probably a bad thing to do. I'm not sure, but I think it's a bad thing to do. So we're going to have to launch again, which is a long and tedious effort. And I think I'm going to try to put air brakes in an attempt to pull the center of pressure uh, on, onto this side of the center of mass. So the center of mass I expect is basically where our camera is pointing. So right around here is the center of mass. Uh, now the center of pressure is going to be pulled down by those heat shield quite a lot. And we need the air brakes to sort of stick out so that they have an effect. And the best place to put them is probably around here, uh, right with the parachutes. So, yep, I'm going to launch again with the air brakes like that and see if it goes any better. But, you know, there are a lot of possible solutions to this. And the, they all take a really long launch to make them happen, basically. So the thing is, we also have to keep in mind launching again from the sur surface of EVE. And I hope I don't say Venus too many times. Uh, the surface of EVE. And if we try to put fins on this, something fixed but large, that would definitely point us in the right direction. Those will become problematic if we try to go up again, unless we attach them to decouplers and eject them off or something like that. I would like a simpler solution than that if possible, and also a lighter solution if possible. Air brakes are pretty light. So I think the air brakes are the way to go. And let's go to the VAB and take a look at their heat tolerances and, and stuff like that. So first of all, I'm just going to eliminate this mission from the tracking station. If we really want to come back to it, we can load up the save. But I think we're just going to destroy that. We can't bring it into a full orbit anyway. So that will save us... I hope no Kerbals were on board. Uh, that will save us some lag, hopefully. But as far as I can tell, eliminating the vessels don't doesn't really help that much. Considering when I tried to get rid of the previous one, or when I did get rid of the previous one, it didn't seem to increase my frame rates at all. So okay, here it is on the launch vehicle. And if we take a look at the air brakes, are they in here or they're aerodynamic? Um, we see that these air brakes are, have a heat tolerance of 1800 Kelvin, which is pretty good and better than the nose cone attempt that I made in the previous video. Uh, then we have these grid fins. These have a thousand. So that's why, I mean, I would think to use the grid fins, but because they only have a thousand, I'm a little bit worried about them. And also they're a lot heavier than the air brakes. And if we just naively take a look at the surface area, hold on, that's not close enough. The grid fins have a lot more width, but they're not that much longer than the air brakes. So if we're talking about slowing down, first of all, the grid fins have holes. But, uh, but I think slowing down wise, they should be fairly equivalent. Uh, with control, as far as control is concerned, the Griffins are probably better. But I think all in all, we want the, just the general air brakes. They're lighter, they have more heat tolerance, and they're not that much smaller in terms of uh, the surface area. So that leaves us with the matter of mounting them in a way that will actually work. And. I don't super duper want to move the parachutes down. I'm gonna try and put them like this. I don't know if they're gonna cause a lot of drag on the way up. But would we even notice with how slow the ascent is? I don't I don't really think so. It looks like I can put five on each of these. And still make it look sensible. So gonna take it off. And Put it on again, six-way symmetry, and hope everything's okay. 
Yeah, I don't think it's getting this. Um, okay, did I finally get it? I think I finally got it. All right. It's tough to place stuff like this, but I need to reconnect the fuel lines and everything. Well, will it all fall apart when we take it outside? That's another question. Uh, they're not quite in line with things. I'm gonna try and rotate them. Okay, so I've got the air brakes on. That's 30 air brakes in total. Will they help? It's tough to say, but they can't hurt, I think. So let's launch this one. I'll go to my lucky launch pad one and we will see how it goes. I've already lined up with the EVE window. It says zero meters per second though. Uh, I hope we've got more than that. Uh, oh, it gave me a thunk and it's all exploded. Well, it's all doing this thing. Hmm. Well, I guess we deserve one explosion per episode for this EVE mission, right? Ah, uh, it's just taking too long. Come on. Oh, this time the top topple. That's pretty rare, actually. Okay. Whoa, whoa, it all went gone. It went all went away. Wow. Okay, yep, all right. Well, let me just try it again like this, and then maybe we'll F5 and F9 or something. Uh, uh. It actually seems mostly intact right now. Oh, the booster went. I mean, I, I clearly don't have any control here, but I don't know why. Okay, the F5, F9 thing. I definitely never saved and reloaded in the VAB in KSP1. But here we are. No, oh, I don't like the sound of that. Come on. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna go, go, go. Okay, go. All right, we're off. I think. Is anything off about the fact that we're off? I'm really check trying to check the fuel lines up there to make sure. There. Oh gosh. Okay, they're there. All right, up we go. This is a new shot. Always good if you've launched a thing a few times to get a few new shots in. Screenshots in this case. Uh. A sequence of screenshots, really. Well, I think it is performing a little bit better because I'm not streaming while recording this this time. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit better. I thought it wise not to try and have my audience sit through another launch of this thing. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. It continues. Okay, booster is almost out. Probably lofting a little bit too much here. Okay, booster set. Okay, well, turning the engines off and on so I can hear them. 
standard procedure. Oh, let me cut it there. We'll off the coast a bit. Okay, we are at long last in orbit, and I'll just cut it there. Let's see about Eve. Okay, we have an encounter. It's the one up there, which I generally don't like to go for. I prefer the one down here. So maybe I'm going to just cancel that and try and finagle the one down there. But it's really, really hard to make a maneuver node here right now. I, I'm contemplating whether to just spend some radials so I don't have to tweak this. But... Okay, well, I'm going to have to replot this with the swerve anyway, so we're going to go with it as plotted right now and then work on, work on it after we lose these boosters at least. Right, I probably should have stopped the time warp a little bit sooner if we were going to turn. Might have to turn on the engines just to turn around. Okay, going full thrust now. Going full thrust now. Okay, and separation. And ignition of the nuclear engine. Off they go. Once again. <laughs> We've been through this before, but you know. Okay, at this point I'll replot it. Well, the problem is there's no descending node there. So it's not going to get super close. Unless we add some inclination. Trying to get that one to work out is probably easier with the ascending node there, though. But anyway, I'll do this first and hopefully we can get that second one set up. Okay, well, we'll be skimming the atmosphere again. Here goes nothing. Yeah, here goes... here goes nothing. Okay, there we go. An exceptionally green area of Kerbin right here. Lush forests. Ah, it looks like this time we're not going to be cutting it as close as the previous time. Okay, well, I am going to have to plot a correction. I am um, trying to get number two right is too much. I'll try number one, but uh, I, I don't like the look of it. There's a less fortunate opportunity than the previous ones I've had. So we're going to have less of this stage to help us capture than before. Okay, so in three days we do that. 282 though is a lot to be doing as a correction. But that's because I was aiming for the second intercept point and it doesn't look like that's a good idea, so... Then again, maybe I can try some plot that might make it work. Uh... I'm expecting it to be pretty expensive, though. Okay... <laughs> and... And... Go! Okay, so we have a good Eve periapsis, the problem is... I don't think we can capture with 415 meters per second. Yep, that's no good. So, what do we do about that? Because we can't use these engines yet. I did make a save after uh, 
before doing the Eve Trance burn, and I might redo the burn. Maybe... Because what we did was we tried for opportunity number two and then switched to opportunity number one. And I think we can redo the burn and just focus on opportunity number one, intercept number one, and just go with that instead of switching, and that would save us some. So, yeah. I think... I'm going to reload the save and do that. As painful as that might be, <laughs> uh, this probably isn't a good thing. Still, we're not going to save too much like that. We're going to save some, but not too much. Okay, so I've loaded up the save where we are in this state, so boosterless, but with our swerve uh, having 1,149 meters per second, and I've replotted so now we're aiming for opportunity number one or intercept point number one instead of intercept point number two. And the reason being intercept point number two was too far away from the descending node for me to correct the descending node into it. And so we're going to try to meet up with the target there. The reason I didn't do that initially was because I was afraid that I would take too much to capture when we get there if we did that. And it's still going to take 700 meters per second at least. So we're pretty tight right now, and that's a, that's a problem. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how it goes, but this is a little bit rough here. This uh, particular opportunity to Eve is not the best one. But anyway, we have to go around the planet because our node is over there. So let us time warp. Okay, we've done just above the horizon. Go. Uh oh, okay. I was a little bit early there. Uh oh, oh no. Oh, for heaven's sakes. That's what I get for loading a save. <sighs> and I plotted it so nicely, too. Gosh darn it, game. Okay, well, I've plotted it even better. Uh, but this time I'm going to F5. Okay, and. F9. I mean, reloading might just be good enough to prevent a spontaneous disassembly, though, but just for safety's sake. Okay, now time warping. Well, the maneuver node should be around somewhere, right? I don't see it on the nav ball right now. That worries me because Prograde's right there. I mean, compared to our trajectory, it should be fairly prograde. I guess it's it's up here somewhere. I don't know. Oh, the maneuver node's down there. I, I thought it was going to be down there, but then it started turning away from it. Gosh darn it. Yeah, it decided to turn in the opposite direction from the maneuver node. We take long, too long to turn as it is without you going in the wrong direction. Okay, well, we managed to turn... Promptly enough, anyway. And sunlight. And hopefully not spontaneous disassembly. Trying to be gentle when coming out of time warp. I'll wait for the green. Okay. Alright. It seems like we're going this time. 10 minute burn! Of course, I'll use time warp, but still. I did restart the game, and I feel like it's getting less lag since I restarted. It's probably a good idea to restart after big launches. Okay, well, that's close enough to the... Okay, stop, stop, stop. Let me just see what's going on instead of blindly following that anymore. Okay, that seems to be a minimum. And let me try and plot a correction out here. Because I'm expecting it to be an inclination correction, but I don't really want to get closer to the sun for it. Okay, about 5 meters per second there, so it will leave us with 700. Okay, it's going away from it now. Well, now and only now can I plot to see how much it's going to take to capture. Of course, we had the previous attempt for reference. 
Okay, well we can do it with our 706 this time. But uh, it's still a pretty high capture compared to what we did on previous attempts. But anyway, we will certainly take that. Uh, we might be able to pull the periapsis in a little bit closer and plot that a little bit better. We'll get over there and then see. So, finally leaving Kerbin's SOI. Okay, now in EVE SOI. Oh, is it not going to show me the capture event little marker? Uh, EVE should be around somewhere again. <laughs> hate when planets creep up on me. There it is. Of course, because of the sunlight and all. Little purple ring. Oh, I should have gotten the periapsis closer, but anyway. We'll be doing that during the burn. Every so often, the little yellow lights flash like it's time to go, but it's not time to go. I don't know why. It's just one more thing that makes me wonder about this thing. A go. I really don't like it when we're trying to retro burn that the orbital speed is going up so fast, but that's the nature here. Uh, it's, it would be going up faster if we weren't burning, I guess. Okay, that's worrisome, but again, I think it's just wrong about that. Unless we're suddenly controlling from the wrong direction. You know, showing stage 4 as being necessary for this burn because it's not counting it down at all. Okay, we should have captured or are close to doing it. I mean, the apoapsis is positive. There we go. But that periapsis is getting really close to the atmosphere. Which is not bad for our ultimate retro burn, right? We have to dip it into the atmosphere. It's not too soon. Alright, so. The purpleness of Eve, here we are again. Will the air brakes help? That is the question. Okay, so we're right outside the atmosphere there. I finished that burn. We've got 86 left. Well, now I know why I didn't do Eve missions in KSV-1. <laughs> Well, I mean, not no EVE missions, I mean, landing Kerbals on EVE and trying to bring them back. I never did that in KSP-1. One of the things I did not do in KSP-1. Of course, eventually in KSP-1, it got a little bit easier with ISRU and all that. So you could drill for fuel and replenish your fuel on the surface of EVE. That sure makes it easier. Actually, that discouraged me from doing it even more because then it got easier. So, what's the point, really? So 62 definitely caused us to flip around as far as the periapsis is concerned and we flipped way before we got to the 60s I think so hopefully the aero brakes will help or air brakes will help but I don't know I think I'll try 70 first though but I thought I did 72 and that was stable hmm I'll go with that. 68.6. Alright, back down again. Okay, let me get rid of the stage. And hopefully we can turn to retrograde quickly enough. And I'm just gonna get the air brakes out now. They look rather puny right now, <laughs> to be honest. They look rather puny. If only I had some hinges, I'd rotate out some extra heat shields, or we could have pistons and actually deploy the inflatable heat shields or something like that from up here. So they'd be strapped on to the side and then they'd go out and then we'd have a hinge turn them towards the Airstream, and I could come up with all sorts of things to solve this problem, but here we are. We don't have robotics. 
We also don't have SAS able to turn towards retrograde very well. It's still sort of interest, overly interested in roll for some reason. Okay, we are getting heat, including on those. Now, note that the heat sort of effect doesn't seem to be distributed properly on those air brakes. Uh, but maybe these are covering them somewhat, but then these are fully heated. So it's sort of uneven where the effect is applied. Um, it does seem to be slowing us down more than before with the air brakes out, so they seem effective. I'm just looking at that stage wondering if it's going to come back to hit us. I should have just decoupled it earlier. Um, really like the game to actually destroy that. Actually, it's going further away, so that's good. But uh, we should be slowing down more, it, so it's going to be depend on, dependent on its orientation, I guess. How about a blader? Well, we, we only had a little bit of ablation so far. Oh, extra sound. <laughs> the hydrogen tanks seem to be surviving so well over there. Just use those. No. Uh, we know if it was part of the vessel, they'd explode. No, this is pretty good right now. Like that. Definitely need those air brakes. I wonder if we could have gone lower, though, without it flipping. That's the question. And right now, I can't fire engines in order to figure that out. Well, we're going back up again. So I have to ask myself whether I want to reload the save and try a lower altitude or just continue like this. I think I want to reload the save and try another altitude. This is pretty good, but I think we can do better. Let's just try a few kilometers lower. I'm gonna try 65. Well, look at that. Alright. Okay, getting rid of the stage in the darkness here. Oh, there we go, we got sunlight now. Just in time. Okay, we are in the atmosphere and experiencing the heating. But we've got a long way to go to periapsis. I mean, we didn't get any heat warnings last time. The main thing is whether the aerodynamics are good and we won't flip. Seems to be surviving quite well. Not a peep out of it, really. No flipping. No heating. We're going back up. Remarkable. Those air brakes, they're worth their weight. We're gonna end up having used a chunk of a blader though. Not too many passes we can do. But as long as, the, oh, that heat, uh, no, that landing leg is overheating a bit. Well, hopefully we'll get it to cool off, but um, well, now I've got an additional worry, <laughs> one of the landing legs. But yeah. Even without the ablator, maybe the default heat shield heat tolerance will be good enough? I'm not sure. Or is it really, really low? I didn't check that. Okay, so... Well, we'll definitely be doing more passes. That was a given. But we could possibly go lower, but then we might lose the landing gear like that, so maybe we shouldn't. Then we're obviously sticking to the same periapsis because we have no way to change that right now. Well, the heat shields have gotten a little bit burnt there. We used about one third of our blader on the first pass, so expecting two passes, two more passes, before we have to worry about that. Hopefully we'll be slower by then. 
Okay, serious heating sounds. Okay, and going back up, well, we're gonna have to pass through a few more times. So we are going to see whether the heat shields can work without a blader. Uh, this time no overheating indicators, so that's good. Well, in fact, this pass has taken a lot more blader than the first pass. We did spend more time in the atmosphere, because as we get lower we do. Well, that's what they look like now. Interesting. Haven't really seen the bladers get this ablated so far. Usually they hardly use any of their blader at all. Really, we probably want the parachutes before decoupling the heat shields. So, I've rearranged that. I'm thinking we might actually come down at some point. Might be a dangerous assumption. This has also taken quite a long time now, so I don't know if I can do that here today, because it really depends on how many passes we're gonna do. I think the main thing we're gonna test today is whether this can survive without the ablator. That's, and obviously we've seen the effectiveness of the air brakes. But it's possible that we might need to bring it down to a lower periapsis in order for it to actually get down. Because we might actually need to worry about how often we pass through because the ablator might be necessary for the heat shields. Then again, the heat tolerance on the engines and the tanks might be good enough at this point. We'll see. Because the air brakes are still okay. And the landing gear is still okay. Well, as we get lower, it takes more effort to slow down. I mean, because our speed isn't going down so much. The apoapsis isn't either. Well, let's see what happens to these. I think that's the main thing I'm checking here right now. As far as going lower though, again, we'll probably lose the landing gear like that because it was overheating. So I think this might be the limit as far as the landing gear. Of course, we could just land on the nozzles of the engines. That's fairly normal. You know, as that stuff ablates, we should slow down quicker because we have less mass on the same surface area. But it's not that much less. How much... How much do we weigh right now? We're 228... No, that's lying. Uh, it's confused. We're 862 tons. I don't know why it says 220. That's because I dragged that stage here and it hasn't updated yet. Note for developers, uh, when we drag the stage here, it doesn't update the mass properly anymore. Well, we are going back up. Close to losing a blader, but it's also calming down as far as the heating effects. Oh no, they're they're blowing up. Okay, and then the decouplers all blow up. Okay. Oh no, not okay. Not okay. The tanks, or that tank, the central tank. Oh no! Okay, well, so we've got a problem. Um, if we go steeper into the atmosphere, we'll probably lose the landing leg that was overheating. But at least we might keep the ablator and slow down with fewer passes. We clearly can't do this many passes with the ablator that we have. But in this situation, we just end up losing a blader and all blows up. So we have to get down before we lose our blader. And that means a steeper entry. Well, I'm gonna have to try that in a subsequent video because this has got this has taken a lot longer than you might think it has. 
So for now I'm gonna wrap it up here with this experimental result. At least we tested that the air brakes are effective, we might need more of them. Um, and then there's the whole matter of actually getting back to orbit, right? We haven't even brought the little Kerbals here yet. That's a whole other business too. They could cause all sorts of problems on their own. There's always more problems when you put Kerbals on board. So okay, uh, this is the situation and testing will continue. Alas, I was, ha I was hopeful that we could actually land this time and that the heat shields wouldn't be like this. Oh, those are over there for some reason. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, maybe I should have inflatable heat shields behind the main heat shields or something. That could work, uh, when you think about it. That could work. Layer heat shields. One heat shield after another. Um, that would require me to launch again. We'll at least do another test without me launching again. And then we'll think about other more extreme options. Anyway. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.